Hi, and welcome to video two of three videos for section 2.1. We're going to work some examples now uh, using that uh, derivative formula that we learned in video one. So let's say we want to find the derivative of the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 9 at a number a. So this is that formula we had, the f prime of x, or f prime of a, rather, because we're evaluating at a. So f prime of a is the limit as h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a all over this value h. So here's a chance for you to practice. Go ahead and hit pause. Find f of a plus h, find f of a, combine your terms, factor out an h, cancel, plug in a, see what you get for an answer. Come on back, I'll work it through, see if we get the same thing. All right, welcome back. If you tried this on your own, hopefully you got the answer. So if we're taking, finding this value, the limit is h goes to 0. f of a plus h, here's our f of x, so we're going to plug in a plus h anywhere we have an x. So that's what? That's a plus h squared minus 8 times a plus h plus 9 and then we're subtracting f of a, so we just plug in an a everywhere here. a squared minus 8a plus 9 all over h. So again, i got to stress for you guys, you got to be careful with the algebra. There is so much going on just from this line here, and this isn't even that complicated of a function. we got a squared of a binomial. We have some negative signs, more negative signs. If you just mess up even one piece of that, the rest of your time is really spent doing work you shouldn't even have to be doing. So let's simplify this. Limit as h goes to 0. So this guy here, and notice I'm keeping everything in parentheses until it's time to start separating everything out. So this is what? Well, we know from before it's a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. And then minus 8 I guess we can distribute it at this point. So we have negative 8 times a is minus 8a, and negative 8 times h, so minus 8h plus 9, and then minus this whole guy, a squared minus 8a plus 9, all over h. So now let's get rid of parentheses. So we'll go up here, we have the limit as h goes to 0. So the top here, we can pretty much just get rid of parentheses. There's no negative signs to distribute like the second part. So we have a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 8a minus 8h plus 9. And now be careful here because you have to distribute this negative to all three pieces. So minus a squared minus a negative 8a, so that's plus 8a, and minus 9, so just minus 9, all over h. So now let's see what happens here. And, and this is what should happen. If you've done your algebra correctly, at this point, you should be able to start canceling out a bunch of stuff. So we have what? a squared minus a squared. Those cancel. Plus 8a minus 8a. Those cancel. Plus 9 minus 9. Those cancel. So if you're not able to do that, go back and check your work at this point because you might have messed up a sign somewhere. Because those three pieces, this minus f of a, should cancel out with some other pieces. So now we have what? Limit as h approaches 0. So 2ah plus h squared minus 8h, and that's it, all over h. 
So the limit is h goes to 0, factoring h out of the numerator. So you get what? 2a plus h minus 8 all over h. Again, this is what we hopefully get. We want to be able to cancel the h's because why? h is going to 0. So if I have a 0 in the denominator, I've got big troubles. So now I have what? I have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2a plus h minus 8. Because h is going to 0, this piece goes to 0, and I'm left with what? 2a minus 8. Hopefully that's the answer you got. So our derivative of this function at a number a is 2a minus 8. This is a lot of work, isn't it? And again, as I mentioned, it's not really that complicated of a function. It's a polynomial of degree 2. And if we start getting into some really messy functions, this could be a real nightmare, couldn't it? Especially with the algebra. Mess up one sign, you know, you mess up a negative sign right here, and all the rest of this is, is wasted work. So, in section 2.3, and I know we're only on video 2 of section 2.1, but you're going to learn a shortcut. I'm going to show you that shortcut now, which again, you can use on your homework, you can use once you reach section 2.3 and beyond, but what I would say is, if you are taking a quiz or if you have an exam, and if your instructor says, find this derivative using uh, this difference quotient, then you have to do it this way. If you use the shortcut, they're probably gonna mark you wrong. So let me show you what, let's see what I want to save here. So I'm going to leave that example for the time being. I'll leave our answer, 2a minus 8. So what the shortcut says is the following. So if we have some function, so if f of x is some general polynomial, so a n x to the n plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, everything down to what? a 1, x to the first, plus a 0. And we don't normally don't write x to the 0, but I'm going to write it in here for uh, explanation purposes here. So if we had to find the derivative of this, we'd have to do f of a plus h minus f of a over h, all that algebra. But the shortcut is as follows. And again, you're going to learn this, so it's not like I'm telling you something forbidden and prohibited. It's just I'm telling you it now so that if you're doing your homework, maybe instead of the homework taking eight hours, it takes you 45 minutes instead. So a better use of your time which you're going to learn anyways, and otherwise the difference quotient is really testing how good your algebra, not how good is your calculus. So the shortcut, we're going to do basically two steps. The first thing we're going to do is take the exponent on the first term and multiply it times the coefficient. So that's going to give us what? It's going to give us whatever the coefficient is, a to the n, times whatever this exponent is, n. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 1 from this number n. So it's basically n minus 1. So if this was x to the 10th, we would multiply 10 times the number in front and do 10 minus 1 is 9. And then we just keep repeating that process. So we get, take this guy, take the exponent, Multiply it by the first, subtract 1. Keep going all the way down the line. So what do we get here? We get 1 times a1. And it becomes what? It becomes x. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is what? It's 1. So we're just left with a1 times 1, which is just a1. And then how about at the end here? Well, we have 
the exponent, which is 0, times the number in front, a0, zero, 0 times anything is 0. So the constant, that's what this was to start, some, that, some value without a, a variable, this just becomes 0. Any constant when we take its derivative is going to go to 0. So, kind of messy. That's why I use the different colors here to sort of um, break it apart for you. But the idea is straightforward. The idea is take the exponent, times it by the number in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. Take the exponent, times it by the number in front, subtract 1. Do that the whole way down. So now, let's find the derivative of this. Again, this was at the number a. So if I do that on this function here, find the derivative, that tells me f prime of x is what? Well, I'm going to take the 2. And so we have what? We have like an invisible 1 here. So 2 times 1 is 2. And then we take the exponent and we subtract 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So that means x to the first power. If you want to write 1 to keep track of it. Then move on to the next term. So we have what? We have 1 here times negative 8, so be careful with your signs. So negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. And then x to the first power, so 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the 0 is just 1, so we're not going to rewrite that in there. We won't put the x to the 0 power. And then this guy is what? Well, again, this is basically like x to the 0 power. 0 times 9 is 0, so that part's gone. So that's f prime of x, 2x minus 8. But we want it evaluated at a number a, so that means what? f prime of a, we're just plugging in a anywhere we have this, so what do we get? 2a minus 8. And what is that? It's what we had when we did an entire board's worth of algebra, right? So you can see, basically, in one or two steps with, with very little algebra, so very little chance of making dumb mistakes, there you go. You can get the same answer. So that's the shortcut. And going forward, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm not going to take up video time uh, always doing the, the long version. But again, if your quiz or your... Uh, your exam calls for you to do the long version. Unfortunately, you don't have much to do. But you can always use this as a check. You know, if you got a piece of scrap paper on the side, you can always do it and say, oh, okay, I know my answer has to be 2a minus 8. Let's see if that's what I get when I do all the work. Let's look at one more problem, and that'll wrap up video two. So in this problem, we're going to be finding, so before we were just finding the slope of the tangent line. Now we're going to expand that problem to be find the equation of the tangent line. So to do that, we're going to need what? So recall the point-slope formula. And we use this when we have one point and we have a slope of a line that goes through that point, we can figure out the equation of that line. And that says what? That's y minus y1, the y value of the point we're given, is m, the slope, x minus x1, the x value of the point we're given. So, let's do the following. Find the equation... of the tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared minus 8x plus 9 at the point 3 negative 6. So, first thing we need is slope. 
then use the point slope formula. So this equation is the one that we were just working with, the one we used the long method and the short method. And that said what? That said f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 8. Again, that's the example we just did. So I'm not going to go through the whole process to get it again. That's our f prime. That's our derivative. What's our derivative? Our derivative is the slope of the line. And then it's just a matter of where are we at on the graph or on the curve. So we're at 3 minus 6. So that means my slope at this point, I want to plug in 3 for x. So I want f prime of 3. So if I plug that in, I get 2 times 3 minus 8, which is 6 minus 8, which is negative 2. So that's my slope at that point. Now I need the equation. I'm going to use the point-slope formula. So I have what? Y. So here's my slope. Keep track of it. So the slope at the point 3, negative 6 is negative 2. So now I'll plug these guys in. And again, because of all the negative signs, be careful with your algebra. So y minus y1, so this is my x1, y1, is equal to m, negative 2, times x minus 3. Simplify this so we get y plus 6 is negative, and I'll distribute here, so negative 2 times x is minus 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is plus 6. So subtract 6 from both sides, we get y is equal to minus 2x plus 0. So that means the slope of the tan, I mean the equation of the tangent line at the point 3 minus 6 of this parabola is equal to y is equal to minus 2x. So you can see that shortcut will save us a lot of time if we had to figure this out the long version. That's going to take up most of the problem, but once we do the shortcut, we get what the derivative is. Then no matter where we're at on this curve, plug that value into the derivative, gives us our slope, and then use point-slope formula and simplify. So that's the end of video two. Come on back. I'll work a few examples for you guys uh, from the, the chapter examples, chapter exercises. Hopefully, it'll help you on some of the homework problems you encounter, and that'll wrap up uh, section 2.1.